Welcome to Business Ninjas, brought to you by Write For Me, where you'll hear from business leaders who are out there growing their business and slaying it every day. Learn from the masters. Let's get started. Hey, everybody. Welcome back for another episode of Business Ninjas. I'm here today with Kimmy Campson. She's the Managing Director at Careers and Nonprofits. Kimmy, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. So, Kimmy, tell me a little bit about yourself. Such a loaded question, right? <laughs> um, but professionally speaking, I am a Managing Director at Careers and Nonprofits. We are a staffing firm um, that serves nonprofits all across the country. We do have offices located in DC, Chicago, New York, and San Francisco, but we really service nonprofits, like I said, all across the country from entry level up to VP, senior executive level, and everything in between. Oh, wow. um, yeah, I've been doing that for almost seven years, and I kind of fell into it and have loved every second of it. And I just look forward to all that's to come with it, too. That's fantastic. So tell me a little bit more about careers and nonprofits. Well, we were founded in 2006, um, which for a lot of people know that that was a hard time in terms of a recession, especially a hard time to open up a staffing firm where um, a lot of people were struggling to get jobs in general. And then, you know, we were trying to ask nonprofits who already are strapped for cash a lot of the time to contract us to help them build their open jobs. But our founder and president, she really just had a vision of what nonprofit staffing could be. Yeah. Um, there's really, we were like the second firm to ever even do this historically. Right. Um, and so, yeah, and we actually just acquired the first one. So we <laughs> now are really the only, one of the only nonprofit staffing firms. We're definitely the largest um, staffing firm that focuses on like temp nonprofit staffing in the country. Yeah. Um, and so she really had a vision of what nonprofit staffing could be. So even despite having, you know, all these roadblocks really just pushed through because we believed in the ability yeah. to put really awesome people to work at really awesome mission-driven organizations. So yeah. um, we've been doing that ever since. That's great. So talking about awesome people, you mentioned a little bit about the different roles that you're able to assist with at careers and nonprofits. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit more about that. Do you tend to see trends in what you see more? We do. We naturally work on a lot of development and fundraising roles because that's the bread and butter of the nonprofit sector. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have funding if you don't have a person who's going out there and kind of asking for those donations and um, making sure that revenue is coming in. So a lot of nonprofits do delegate that to us. Mm -hmm. um, about 60% of what we work on is development and fundraising focused, mm -hmm. but we do a lot of administration, marketing, communication programs, mm -hmm finance, human resources, we really do a little bit of everything. Yeah. Um, and in terms of trends, you know, it honestly changes so often, you know, even like right now in election season, you know, we see more like VP of government relations and government affairs and types of positions. In the spring, we see a lot of accounting and finance, you know, close to tax season yeah. and um, at the end of each year, we almost always see a lot of like database associates because people are getting year end gifts. And so there's a lot of influx of needing to enter in donations that come in at the end of the year. So so there's a lot of different trends that we see. Yeah. Um, you know, the the job market has been really chaotic the past two years, just since the pandemic. And so it's been really fun, actually, to be right in the middle of that mm -hmm. to see it you know, the market go from non-existent, you know, as soon as the pandemic happened, nobody was hiring, nobody was job searching, everybody was panicking. Um, right. And to then just see the complete, you know, 360 that happened earlier this year, where every candidate has multiple offers and is able to ask for like $20,000 more than they originally mm -hmm. would. Um, which is now balanced out a little bit more, which is honestly great because it was exhausting that way. But um, but it's it's really been interesting to be in the center of it through multiple different, you know, being here for seven years, multiple different election seasons, um, which does impact nonprofit funding, you know, to be here through a pandemic, to be here through just so much change um, and to see how the market reflects that as well. 
Yeah. So talking about, you know, nonprofits, is there a size that you see kind of what careers in nonprofits tends to work with more? Great question. We really work with all sizes of nonprofits. I would say our average. So pretty much we work from like a $1 million annual budget nonprofit to 500 million Mm -hmm. (laughs) annual. So, you know, which are like your really well-known nonprofits. Um, But we work with a lot of, you know, smaller organizations that are more local based or community based. Um, So it really ranges, I would say, probably on average, we're looking at an annual budget of like 10 to 20 million and a staff size of about 100 to 200. But we've worked with nonprofits that have one staff member and a 300K annual budget. So we've really done it all. Yeah. You know, we've really worked with some really big name nonprofits that you'd be like, wow, that's incredible. Just as much as we've worked with, like I said, those local, smaller, maybe like mom and pop nonprofits. Yeah. So are all of the positions remote or are they in person that positions that you work to to fill? Both. Um, so to be honest, the nonprofit sector was not a very like remote friendly place until the pandemic. I'm not sure that we worked on any remote roles until 2020. And then of course, everything went remote. Mm-hmm. I would say now most of the nonprofits that we work with have a hybrid schedule um, where people come in a little bit, stay at home a little bit, whether that is, you know, one day a week, two days a week, three days a week. Um, But we do find that that's where a lot of people have settled is Mm -hmm. a hybrid schedule where there is some flexibility, but because they do want to continue to build morale and culture, it is important to come in. I will say that with nonprofits, a lot of them are, you know, programs based. And so you, you can't, you know, have a soup kitchen without going to the kitchen, you know, you have to be there. So there are some nonprofits that we serve, you know, homeless shelters and um, after school programs that they can't be hybrid, um, but they also don't want to be. But we have just as many that are fully remote. So it really depends. Everybody's kind of made their own decision of what works best for them, but you can find a little bit of everything, honestly. That's so interesting. And I imagine being there for seven years, you've seen such a shift in the trends going from a recession Mm -hmm. into a global pandemic, and then kind of through this job market and economy that you're working here now. Um, So I I can't even imagine kind of the different changes that you have seen really throughout this whole process. Yeah, it's almost like whiplash, you know. (laughs) Yeah, right. But, but yeah, it right. really is it really is interesting because the job market and job searching impacts everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Everybody has looked for a job before or they will or mm-hmm. they know somebody who is. And mm-hmm. so to to be an expert in this area has been so beneficial to myself and then to everybody that I know, whether it's my brother, my friend, my husband, my mom even, mm-hmm. you know, and so being able to kind of be that resource to people um has been really, really rewarding too. Yeah, I bet. That's fantastic. So walk me through the process of what it looks like working with careers and nonprofits, both from, you know, someone who's searching for a job, but also too from the organizational side. Definitely. So I'll start with the job seeker. Yeah. It's, it's a completely free service to job seekers. And it's so easy and risk-free. So pretty much if you wanted to work with us, the best way to get in touch with us would be to go to our website, which is careersnonprofits.com. And you can, there's a button, a million buttons that say like apply now. And you just (laughs) apply to any of our open jobs and you Uh become a candidate in our database. Um, From there, you know, if you have, if you meet certain qualifications, which mostly is just, have you worked in the nonprofit sector before? Mm -hmm. Um, Which that's not to say if you haven't, we wouldn't still be able to work with you. Um, We would just need to have a deeper conversation to understand Mm -hmm. why and how so we can help you make the transition. But once you get into the database, you then connect with a recruiter. Once you've connected with a recruiter, you have access to all the jobs that we work on. And ultimately you apply to ones that you're excited about. And mm-hmm. if we think it's a good fit, we move your resume forward to the right. client or the nonprofit, you interview with them and ultimately they would hire you. Okay. So it's a pretty easy, painless process. Yeah. And I really encourage anybody who's job searching you know, sign up with as many staffing firms as you can, because again, it's a free service. And the more people that are out there advocating for you, the better your chances are. Um, So that's from the job seeker side of things. From the nonprofit side of things, um, 
we always first want to have a conversation with anybody. You know, what is it that you need? What are you looking for? Similarly, if you need to get in touch with us, the best, easiest way to do that is to go to our website. Again, there's buttons everywhere that say inquire now and you you can submit your inquiry and and you'll probably get in touch with somebody like me mm -hmm. um, who would speak to you about your need, about your organization size, what it is you're looking for. And we would actually tailor what we can offer to you based on your need. So mm -hmm. sometimes people will come to us and say, oh my gosh, I'm so overwhelmed. I need a director of development and mm -hmm. I can't even think straight because I have so much on my plate. Okay, we were happy to help you find a director of development, but in the meantime, do you need an administrative assistant mm -hmm. who can help you temporarily until you know the dust settles? Oh. Um, and so I think sometimes people aren't always thinking about what yeah. other options there are for them. They're just seeing this immediate pain point yeah. that they have. Um, and so that's really what we're looking for is, what's under that that we can help you fulfill mm -hmm. um and so we you know of course would, would quote you the rate um it it's unfortunately not a free service for the nonprofits that is how we keep our lights on and right and keep, you know great people on staff but um we would quote the rate and of course make sure it works for everybody and then we would help you know we would go in touch with all those job seekers that we have which is well over seventy thousand nonprofit job mm -hmm. seekers and then present you with the best ones. So yeah. by the time we're working together, we share with you, you know, top three people for your open job. Yeah. And within a statistic of like 52 days, you can expect that role to be filled. Wow, 52 days, that's a fantastic statistic. That's it great. <laughs> so you mentioned before, you know, temp this being a temporary position. So, you know, given the example of the executive assistant, what mm -hmm. does that timeline look like? Is it a monthly, is it a subscription? Kind of walk me through that. Great question. So for temp, in temp roles, we can fill those in about five days. So in the 52 days, that's more like a direct hire search. Okay. In a temp role, we often, like everybody we're working with in the temporary capacity is not currently working. Okay. So they can get started oh, wow. right away. We have worked on assignments that are one day and it's because our receptionist just called out sick and we need somebody immediately to come answer the phones. And so we say, great, go we want to go work on this assignment and they take it. Um, and we have had people on assignment as long as two years. Wow. And so some of the reasons why people um, need temporary help is one, the biggest one is like maternity leave or mm -hmm. health, um, you know, extended health leave. Mm -hmm. um, so they have a person who knows they're going to be out for three months at a time. And so they need coverage during that time. Mm -hmm. So that's one big reason why we fill temporary roles. In the nonprofit sector, people will get a lot of grants. So you apply for a grant, you receive the grant. And a lot of times the grant will last for eight months. Mm -hmm. And so you can't necessarily hire a full-time employee. Right. So rather you would hire a temp for eight months or until the grant expires. Right. Okay. Another reason why people would do temp is because they can do a temp to perm where they ultimately convert the candidate full-time okay. after a certain amount of working hours People like to say it's like a try before you buy yeah. kind of situation where both the job seeker and the client are able to determine, do we like this? You know, yeah. do we get along well? Does this work well before they ultimately make it a full-time direct hire? Yeah. Um, so those are some of the reasons why people would use temp. But again, it can be anything from one day to two years. Okay. Um, it's ultimately up to the organization what their needs are. Yeah. So it sounds like there's kind of three different options, if I'm hearing this correctly. So mm -hmm. one is there the direct hire mm -hmm. two, the kind of try before you buy, like you said, mm -hmm. and then three, that like truly temporary position doesn't matter the time span. Is that right? That's exactly correct. Sweet. OK, yeah. awesome. So it sounds like kind of those offerings, those three things, you know, are really different ways that you're able to differentiate yourself from the competition. What are some other ways that you're able to stand out, you know, in your sector? Well, again, we're really one of the only staffing firms that focus on the nonprofit sector. And so, sure, people have heard of Robert Half and Randstad Staffing, and those are, they're incredible firms. And I, we, they're like Starbucks and we're like your local mom and pop coffee <laughs> shop, um, which both are amazing, you know, yeah. both are great, but you're just going to get a different level of service. Okay. You know, any, any person who comes to work at, with careers and nonprofits is going to speak to me. They're going to speak mm -hmm. to a real person. Um, and, and you're going to just be kept track of differently because we're a boutique style firm. Mm -hmm. But again, the difference between us and Randstad up or, you know, Robert Half, 
other than the fact that they're quadruple our size, is that we only work with nonprofits. And so everybody that we speak to is a mission driven professional. We understand the nuances of grants and having a board of directors and just certain things that in the corporate world don't exist. Yeah. And really, truly, it's a different attitude. It's a different, you know, to go to work in a nonprofit, you oftentimes get paid less. Mm -hmm. And so you really do need somebody who values the mission driven piece of the work. It's not just a job, you know, it really is a mission. It's a purpose. It's a passion. And every person in our 70,000 person candidate pool reflects that. And so I think that's our biggest, that's really the the main reason why clients come to us is because they're like, sure, I could go find anybody who could be my executive assistant, but I want somebody who's worked at an organization like mine and who has experience at an organization like mine. Yeah, that's fantastic. And it sounds like it's truly a, you know, not only a company first organization or, you know, uh, philosophy that you use, but also, you know, when you really take care of the people that you, you know, the job seekers as well. Exactly. And honestly, our hashtag or whatever you want to call it is I love my job. And we use that as a company, like for our team and our employees, I wish I had one in front of me, but we all have coffee mugs that say, I heart my job on them. Oh, I love it. That say it. <laughs> but we, not only do we want our internal employees to love their job, but we place too many people into jobs to not want them to love it. Right. Like yeah. we want every person we place to say, man, I love my job, or at least like, I love it enough for right now, mm -hmm. you know, especially sometimes in a temporal, like, sure. If it's a one day receptionist job, maybe that's not your dream job, but at least you love it enough that you can say, you know, I was able to answer the phones for this really amazing mission for, you yeah. know, eight hours. And mm -hmm. that was really rewarding for me. So it's really important to us that we're putting people in positions where they can really say they love their job. Oh, that's fantastic. I love that. Hashtag, I love my job. I'm going to have to. Use that. <laughs> I love that. Um, yeah. So, Kimmy, if you were to leave our listeners with one thing, either about careers in nonprofits or, you know, as a job seeker or an organization looking to get in contact with, you know, careers in nonprofits, what would you leave our listeners with? What a good question. I think I'm honestly going to tie it back to loving your job mm -hmm. um, because I think every person who comes to our door has a problem, right? They're either a job seeker and they need a new job or they're a nonprofit who needs a new staff member. And we all know when you're hiring and you're down a person, it's exhausting and mm -hmm. nobody wants to be in that position, right? It's tough. Um, and so working with a staffing firm, I think can feel like a real investment. And, and a lot of times nonprofits are like, I just don't even know how we can afford to do something like that but you really can't afford not to sometimes. Yeah. And if, if outsourcing something like hiring is going to help you love your job, it's really worth it because mm -hmm. you shouldn't be going to work every day, dreading it, feeling like, oh my gosh, my pile of things to do mm -hmm. is so large. I can never even get on top of it. Mm -hmm. um, and so working with careers and nonprofits, like not only are you going to work with somebody who does love what they do, um, but we're going to be really adamant to make sure that when you're done working with us, you love what you do too. That's fantastic. Well, Kimmy Campson, thank you for being on the show. I absolutely love talking with you about, you know, C careers and nonprofits, CMP. Um, so I hope you have a great rest of your day. Again, Kimmy Campson, she's the managing director at careers and nonprofits. Kimmy, thanks for being on the show. Thank you for having me. Thank you.